Now to work with this checkout form, the first step is to validate the credit card data a user enters here. Because of course it's very easy for a user to enter invalid credit card data here. And validating that on our own would be pretty difficult because, well, you might not be aware of the algorithms used to validate if a credit card number is valid, is valid, taking into account the expiration date and so on. Good thing is Stripe does all that for us. So the first step is to sign in or sign up if you would all don't already have an account with them. And once you did this, I'll, well, come back. So I signed into Stripe and as you can see, I already got some charges here, though these are all test charges since, and that's important, my account is in test mode. You can see it here at the upper left and you should make sure that your account is in test mode too, so that you can test without any, well, issues. Now, of course, you may play around and definitely check out the Stripe page and documentation as this is no serious about Stripe. I will show you the basics you need to make charges on credit cards, but to learn more and learn how to use it, definitely have a look at the official documentation there. And as you can see, we get the documentation link there and I'll just open this in a new tab because it really has a great documentation starting with this getting started example, which really guides you through the basic steps you need to implement to well validate the data and make a charge. And actually this will be pretty much what we're going to do next. So what I will do is I want to create this credit card validation logic. And for this, I will use the Stripe SDK, which basically is a JavaScript package I import into my application, not on the back end, in the front end. And this SDK will then grab the form, the values there, send it to the Stripe server, validate it, and give me back the result of this validation. So it does all of that for me. And indeed, it will actually stop the actual form submission, which would of course result in a request being sent to my own server and wait for the validation result to come back. Sounds a bit strange. Well, you're going to see all of that soon. The very first step is to import the Stripe SDK into your application. So to the front end. So in the documentation, you may scroll down to stripe.js here. And this will lead you through all the steps required here. First one is to grab this import, which will use a CDN, so you don't need to download anything here. And then back in your application, head over to the checkout HBS file. And at the very bottom, you may add this import. That's the first step. The next step is to go into your public folder, the JavaScripts folder, and then here, I will create a new file, which I will call checkout.js. So this is a JavaScript file, which will run on the front end, not on the back end. It's not running on my Node.js server. I also want to import this checkout.js file and I will do so after importing the Stripe SDK. So I will just duplicate this import. And here I want to point to source JavaScripts checkout HBS. Now here's an important adjustment we have to make though. In this file, I will use jQuery to basically fetch the data from my form. And the problem I do have is in my layout file, which wraps all my views, if you remember this, I do import jQuery at the bottom after my body hook here. So it will be imported after whatever view gets entered here. The issue I have is I want to use jQuery in this script here though, but this will get imported in this place, in this body place. So I would then try to use jQuery even though I only import jQuery after using it. I hope that's clear. Now to fix this, what I will do is I will grab this whole import, this jQuery import, and just place it right before inserting the body here. And this is just a solution to make sure that I have jQuery actually available. Another solution, of course, would be to leave jQuery at the bottom and import this part here 
in the layout of jQuery, but then you would have to make sure that you're not trying to fetch data which isn't there yet. So either way, some adjustment is needed. I'm going to go with this way by importing jQuery before the view. So with that, I'm ready to actually populate my checkout.js file and fetch the data from my credit card form to then validate it through Stripe. Now for that, it's actually pretty simple. Back to the Stripe documentation, still at the stripe.js file, we can just go through this article from top to bottom. As it says here, the next part is to set the publishable key. That is required because when Stripe validates the credit card data, it will give us back a token if the data is valid. And this token will basically hold the credit card data and it will be encrypted with our publishable key. With that key, we will later on be able, or with another key, with our private key, we will later on be able on the server to decrypt this credit card information and make the actual charge. That's this two-step process, validation and then charging. Now we do need this key here to encrypt the data to make sure that we don't make, or that no other person is able to, well, do something with some cross-site scripting attack or anything like that to send us a wrong charge, which we would then make on our backend. Therefore, we do have the two keys to make sure that we're only making charges, which are really issued from our own page using this key. So therefore, I will set this key. Now, if you're logged in, this key here is no example key, that's your actual testing key. And you can have a look at your keys in your dashboard, if you click on account settings, and then API keys. Now here, I blurred it out in my Laravel video. I will leave it like this here, uh, clearly visible to everyone because I can recreate my keys, which I will do after this video. So here you have the secret key, the one you will need later on for decrypting your, um, your charge or your credit card information. This is the publishable key you saw in the documentation. I know the two live keys are pretty much the same, but for the live environment. Remember, we're in the testing environment. So enough of the talking, I'm going to grab this key here, go back to my checkout.js uh, checkout file and paste it in there at the top. And I can do this because I'm importing this checkout.js file after the Stripe SDK, which introduces this Stripe object, which I'm using here. So even though my IDE doesn't know it, I know that this will be available. The next step is to actually grab the foreign values. And if I go on in the Stripe documentation, you see we get some code here too. So we can just use this code. Though I need a little bit more than just this code, I need to grab my actual form so that I can also stop submission then. So I will just store this in a variable which I named $form and I will use jQuery to select this checkout form. And that's just an ID I assigned here in my checkout.hbs view, this ID here. That is the ID by which I'm selecting the form here. Next, I'm using this form variable to add a submit listener here. That's just jQuery code here with the submit method. I'm making sure that this method gets executed whenever I submit the form and or that this callback function here gets executed whenever I submit the form. So this will be the function getting executed. And in here, what I want to do is I want to first use my form again and find this button in the form. There is only one button, which is the submit button. Here, I want to set the disabled property to true. So I want to disable the button. I'm doing this so that the user can't submit the form multiple times while validation is going on. Next, I will go back to the Stripe documentation, grab this code here and paste it in here. Now I need to make some adjustments though. For one, I'm not fetching the address, but what I will fetch is the name. And the only really required fields are the first four. So you don't need to pass the name, you didn't need to pass the address. You could just leave it out, but for completeness sake and also for later lectures or videos in this series, I will also fetch the name here for now. Now, of course, it might be worth fetching the address later on too, but I'll go with that for now.
Now card number, card CVC, card expiry month and year, these are all the IDs I'm using in my HBS in my view file here. So these are the IDs set up here, card name, card number and so on. I also do have my card holder name, which is card name. So that's the one thing I need to change here instead of address zip. I do have card name and that's something I need to change in all the other fields too. I'm not using classes, I'm using IDs. So replace the dot with the hashtag sign. With that, I'm fetching all the values from my HTML form and I'm calling this stripe card create token function again, a function ships shipping with the stripe SDK. Now this function has the data as a first argument and the second argument is the response handler which will get executed once it is done validating my data. I will also add a return false statement here to make sure that the form submission which is triggered when I click the button and then triggers this um, jQuery function here that this form submission is actually stopped and doesn't continue so that it doesn't actually send a request to my server yet because I don't want to do that. I haven't validated it yet therefore I certainly don't want to submit it to the server yet. So the next step of course is to create this function this stripe response handler the callback function we're looking through for here as a second argument. Now this callback function will get a status and the response. And how do I know that? We'll have a look at the official documentation. Here you will see this response handler. And again, we can basically copy this, though we don't need this form uh, code here. We already got it through jQuery. But I will copy all the rest, paste it in here. And what are we doing here? Well, we're checking if we actually got an error in our response, which would mean that probably our form is invalid or our credit card data is invalid. Then we try to show some error messages that won't work as of now. We have to do something here and we re-enable the submission. So we enable the submit button again. Remember, I'm setting it to disable true here at the top when we clicked it. Now, if we fail, I certainly want to enable it again so that the user may fix his errors. If we don't have a response error, well, in this case, we're creating or we're getting the token which Stripe created for us. And this token can just be fetched on the response object, which gets passed into this callback and here on the ID property. That's just a property available due to the Stripe SDK being added to our project. And then I add something to the form. I use jQuery to add it. I add a hidden input field, which has the name Stripe token, and which, or which gets this token, which got, got generated through Stripe, as a value. So like with the CSRF protection, which also used a hidden input field, here we're also, well, adding this token, which was created, which holds the encrypted credit card information to the form, so that when it actually gets sent to the server, and that's what is happening in the next and last step here, where we actually submit the form to the server then. So once we do this, we pass this encoded credit card information, or this encoded and validated credit card information to the server too. And here's the point I was talking about earlier. We encrypted this with our, well, key so that we can then decrypt it with our private key. And if these two keys match or if, the, if they are matched through the Stripe algorithm, then the charge is made. But I'll come back to charging later on. For now, let's go back to the error case where I wanted to show an error. I get this payment errors field here but that won't work now. In my checkout HBS file, I don't have any place to show some errors. So let's work on that. I will add a new div right below the total heading here. And this should get an ID of charge error, let's say. And I will give this some bootstrap classes like alert and then alert danger, just to make this red and clearly visible. And then here, 
I want to output any or error I might have. Now, for now, of course, I don't have an error, but in the checkout.js file, I might add one. Indeed, I'm trying to do this here where I find this, but of course here I have to find charge error. This is the ID I just created, right? Charge error. That's the ID assigned here. So I'm selecting this and I want to set a text which should be my error message. I'm just accessing this on my Stripe objects here. And also, I kind of want to make sure that I only show this message if we, well, do have an error. So I will go back to the view and add another class here, which I will call hidden. That's a bootstrap class, which will basically hide this element, which you can see if I reload my checkout page right now, you don't see any special div here, right? So because it is hidden. And if I, just to show this, if I remove the hidden class, well, you would see this empty red alert. So let's reintroduce the hidden class here. But in the checkout.js file, what I want to make, uh, what I want to do is I want to, well, uh, find this charge error here. And then, uh, well, I'm already setting the text, but I also want to remove a class here. I want to remove the hidden class because I want to show it, right? And with that, I'll be able to actually show validation errors. Now with all of that being in place, that should really work. So if I reload this page again and I hit buy now, well, I get the default validation going on because I added the required attributes. So what I will do here is I will add Chris, a test address. This should also be Chris. And regarding the credit card number, I'll first work with a wrong one. And then let me add some dummy data here like this. If I click buy now, now I'm getting an error. And the reason is that in my checkout HBS file, well, I'm linking to source JavaScripts. Well, that doesn't exist in the public folder. I can directly access JavaScripts. And it of course also helps to <laughs> name this to .js, not HBS. There is also one other change I want to make. Uh, so I just realized this when I had a look over this checkout HPS file. In my checkout JS, I'm trying to find the charge error on, well, inside my form. But actually this is placed outside of the form, right? So what I will do here is I will remove form find and well, just select it through jQuery directly like this. Now with all that in place, if I now go back uh, to the page here and well reload this, and I re-enter my test data and keep in mind that I'm on purpose entering valid, uh, invalid credit card data here. If I now hit buy no, you see I get the error here. If I do fetch valid data, like um, for example, the one here, the Stripe documentation on the getting started article, here we get a valid credit card number, which we may use for testing purposes. And for testing, you may use any credit card number with any validation, uh, excuse me, expiration year, which lies in the future and any free card code. If I now hit, hit this, you see we get this not found error, which is great because now I'm trying to send a request to the server and there I'm trying to access the checkout route with a post request, which doesn't exist yet. So even though this is an error, it technically means it works. So we're almost there, ready to make a charge. One little bit of fine tuning I wanna add here is, I want to also add the hidden class here when we first try to submit this form. So if we did have any errors before, I want to clear them now and therefore add the hidden class again. So that once we hit submit the second time, it disappears. And if we got errors, we see new errors instead of the old ones. Great, so with that, we're ready to make the charge. We validated the credit card data through Stripe, through Stripe servers. And with that, well, time to make the next step and actually use our server-side code to charge our customer.